What up everybody? Happy Monday and welcome back to another Modern Monday gameplay video. Today we are checking out... Uh, today we're checking out a Gyruda Fatties deck that used their underdog 11, 111, took to a 5-0 finish in an MTGO Modern League. Um, so Gyruda decks you might have seen in either Modern or Pioneer were probably clone decks. You know, people have built those so that you just like Gyruda into a clone, clone Gyruda, eventually hit spark doubles and you'll just loot your entire deck with cloned Gyrudas and eventually hit like a Dragon Lord Kuligon to give all your dudes haste. And the problem with that deck is it's pretty inconsistent. And because of its inconsistently, I don't think I've ever lost to that deck before because they just fizzle and then you proceed to beat them because they haven't interacted with you for four turns or you just sweep their board if you're a control deck and you have a sweeper if they didn't hit the Kolagon. So that deck has serious problems. So what it looks like uh, Underdog111 did with this deck here today is he's like, screw it, I'm tired of fizzling, I'm just gonna use Gyruda to actually reanimate something good and just have a good board. Um, and I think that that might be a lot more of an efficient way to run Gyruda and I think that's originally what Gyruda's intent was. Um, so imagine reanimating something like a prime time and getting something crazy off of that. Um, so that's what this deck is built around and I've been meaning to play something like this in the channel. So I'm happy that Underdog 111 did so I didn't have to go spend all the time brewing it. So I'm happy. So if you wanted to try today's deck, you can sign up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off and you can rent today's deck on Magic Online. If you wanted to purchase today's deck in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And special thanks to all of my supporters over on Patreon. This channel is possible because of you guys. It isn't required, but if you would like to join the Patreon as well, the link is down below. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. All right, we are live on Twitch as of now. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. And we just got the announcement this morning about the companion mechanic. So now you have to pay three mana sorcery speed to put your companion from your sideboard into your hand. But thank goodness this deck also has three main board Gyrudas, and it's probably not that huge of a downside to this deck. Um, however, there is a deck that I queued up for Friday that I queued up last week, and I didn't know this was ever going to happen. So hopefully that deck still works. Um, but we'll figure that out when we get to it. I will be talking more on the companion companion mechanic change um, during the gameplay today. I can't tell you which round it would be because I I don't know that yet. But um, yeah, let's just go over today's deck. So this is a ramp deck. It's trying to ramp to Gyruda and reanimate a bomb. You know, you can hit like Ashen Rider to exile a permanent. You can hit a Worm Coil, uh, Obstinate Bailoff. Notably, all these things have ETB effects. You can flicker them with Restoration Angel, or you can just flicker your Gyruda with Restoration Angel and get another trigger. Uh, I said this wasn't a clone deck, but we do have, I believe, is there no Spark Double in here? Well, I guess we have one single um, Phyrexian Metamorph. But that can be a... Is that something you can flicker with Resto? No, you can't, because it also copies a creature. Anyways, Prime Time is one of the main things you want to get with Gyruda, because it can go searching for all kinds of tech. Um, notably, Field of the Dead, so you can start making a whole ton of zombies. And then we have Ramp to get up to Gyruda. So Sylvan Carry added, and Sakura Tribe Elder, and Far Seek, and Explore are called Safe Ramp, because they're Ramp that you can't kill. You guarantee get your Ramp. And then one of the sweetest Ramp pieces in here is Monvoli Acid Moss. You get to disrupt your opponent's mana base, destroy their land, and go and fetch your own. And that'll Ramp you right up to six if you hit your land drop the next turn, allowing you to get right into Gyruda. And so pretty solid build, pretty straightforward, really simple. And it's gonna be a lot of fun and stiff. Sideboard, damnation, we need a sweeper. Uh, broken bond so we can continue to ramp because we have 28 total lands um the only tech in there is probably field of the dead i mean we got blast zone to grab with as well if we need to sweep something ghost quarter if there's a problematic tron land radiant fountain if we need to get life and about it as far as tech goes but there's also gemstone caverns so we get extra mana on when we're on the draw broken bond is a naturalized effect plus a ramp spell Gyruda in the companion slot abrupt decay because we're going to need to deal with rest in pieces uh, Gadok Teague to stop those four CMC or greater non-creature spells, but Jukabog to grab off of Primetime if we need to exile the grave. Damping Sphere for Storm uh, or Amulet Titan. Uh, engineered Explosives to Sword. And Chalice of the Void in case we're going up with Storm or Jund or whatever. 
that is about it. We are ready to go on to the gameplay. Got a game here against RVCA1375, and we are going to be on the draw here with some Gyruda fat stuff. Um, yeah, that looks good. Explore into Monvoli into Gyruda is a good hit combination. Uh, how about patrons get drawn portraits? I thought about that, but I'm not that good of an artist. Um, and I would only, I could not draw humans, so I'd only have to draw them as furries. And I, I'm not sure everybody likes that or appreciates that kind of thing. Because not everybody likes furries. So that's the problem. But if all of my patrons did, that'd be cool. How's the how's the protogen thing doing, Samurai? Good Patreons only magic night. One night where you just hang out and play on MTGO. That's true, but um and I guess I could do that and I could use face rig and just chill and play some stuff with them. Um I could do that like Friday nights or something. Um, right, basic forest, explore. Oh, please don't be control. Please don't be lame. Wow, force negation on. Pitching to fairy and force of negation for an explore. I mean, I'll take that value. You're down to three cards left. But still, we're going to lose because they're going to slam baby to fairy here and it's going to be annoying. So, is this just a uh, snow? Just a bant snow? All right, to get around the potential of. Um, to get around the potential for sensor, I'll play this land first, then I'll play Sylvan Carry Added. Ooh, they fetch in. Gretchen Fetchums. Shout outs to you if you know where Gretchen Fetchums is from without looking it up. If you know where that is off the top of your head, you're you're a friend of mine. Mana leak on a Sylvan carry added. I'm okay with them mana leaking these useless things. All they're doing is delaying the game, allowing me to naturally get up to my bombs, and they're not going to have counter spells ready for them because they're using counter spells on my ramp. Got plenty of mana. This deck has 28 lands. But at some point, they're going to drop like a Jace or something, and I'm going to lose. Is it Jace time now? Doesn't look like it. Cameo? Okay, if they tap it a second blue here, that's definitely a Jace. Okay, baby to fairy, sure. Noble. Okay, so it is banned snow. They got zero cards left. Yo. Okay, I feel like I'm in a good spot. Basic swamp monvoli on hollowed fountain. Don't get a overgrown tomb. So they don't they can't play to fairy hero of Dominaria now. You streamed um face rig game sounds awesome. Yeah, like I was thinking maybe like Thursday nights we can have Patreon MTGO gameplay night and I wouldn't like record it for YouTube. Maybe I would and just have like a, a little, you know, Sunday series like Patreon day. All right, Radiant Fountain. Do I want to go for Gyruda or do I want to go for Prime Time and just get the value? I think I'll go Prime Time because we know they don't have a counter spell right now. And if they don't, oh, they have zero cards. Yeah, this Prime Time getting double field of the dead is just going to end them for sure. Even though they can field a ruin one of them, because getting all these zombies here is going to be game over. Field of the dead. Field of the dead. Be your worst. So their only hope here is to end the turn, field a ruin on one of them, and then untap and like draw a white source and verdict. That's that's their hope. But even then, I can just slam Gyruda. 
All right, Teferi, what you bouncing? Because if you bounce prime time, I'm just going to be able to replay it and draw and, and get four more zombies. Didn't even use Teferi. You had some uh, streamed paper games with MTG Lexicon this weekend. It was awesome playing with them. Oh, yeah, same here. Um, I had a good time playing with them, too. Uh, they, were, they were really nice guys. Wait, was it MTG Lexicon I played with? I forget. Um, I think it was uh, Commander 99 I played with. Go get a snow covered forest. What's up? Is not bot. Hey, Marin, would you be interested in playing an Etched Monstrosity and Solemnity deck? Um, if you got a good a good list of it to show me that you know you do well with and that you've refined a bunch, then and yeah, if it looks solid, if it looks solid for sure. Would you? Okay, let me see. What if we don't? What if we don't what? Um, basic forest. Get another zom. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah, I can play prime time and then clone it with uh, with the uh, Rexian metamorph. This is gonna be so fun. Prime time. Go fetch in. Yes, let's go and get blast zone and ghost quarter. Yeah, this is concession time for sure. Yeah. All right, sweet. Oh, you sour puss. They're a sour puss, a party pooper. They just scooped the whole round. Dude, play your mash. They're salty. They, they salt scooped. Screw you, dude. I'm adding that one in the video. <laughs> All right, we got a game here against Kilgore Trout as something is in my eyeball. Playing some Garuda bombs. You're on the draw. And that looks good. They have no companion because this mechanic just got nerfed. It got nerfed. But for us, it's kind of fine. Like, we can just spend three mana and get it back. We got a lot of mana to spare. Nice butt is back. Yeah, it got it got put back. I after like a week after it got taken down, I re-uploaded it as um tail and it got accepted. But Skuru had it as tail and got unaccepted, or got deleted again too, as tail. So now Skuru has it as moon. So eventually, you never know, tail could get deleted. Probably some angry moms, like, reporting it. Like, that's lewd. Honestly... Don't even try to pronounce it. You still can't even work it out. Fushiski. That's that's fun to say though. Um. All right. Let's go with. Uh. uh explore. Into. Indothatrium because it's a tabland. There you go. So we're going to be able to hard cast Ashen Rider, which is cool. All right, Sakura. So the opponent looks like they're on just some kind of uh, Anza deck. That's a deck that plays RG and birds. Oh, maybe they're on Amulet Breach or Amulet or what do you call it? Titan Breach. Possibility Storm. Go fetch this thing. Get a, a swamp. Okay, well, that's going to be pretty good for us. What sorcery can I hit here? I can only hit another. Oh, no. They're going to do their combo with the gut shot and getting a madcap experiment, right? Or what do you call it? Polymorph? They hit another gut shot off of gut shot. Got lucky. 
Um. All right, so let's go far seek, and we'll hit another far seek. Yeah. Von Vuli Acid Moss. Okay, blow up that. We'll get an overgrown tomb tapped. And let's go to the sideboard and put Gyruda into our hand. Huh? Wait. Hello? Hello? The companion mechanic just got up updated this morning. Why didn't it work? What is going on? That is weird. So the emote would be Marin Moon. No, it'd be Marin M Moon. That's what it would be. So it'd be kind of like different. If somebody tries to type my name and they get a typo, it would just put a butt. Oh, shared summons. You can just go to get two more birds. Yeah, they're going to go grab two more birds. Heart's Desire. Oh, there's your sorcery for Enter the Infinite. Okay, let's see what they're trying to do. Oh, is it Borborigmos? Pearl's Breach? Wait. Wait. What are they doing? What is their plan? I see Emrakul, the promised end. I'm trying to try to get off the creature. There's Bobo. Wait. How is Bobo their last card? Hello? How did they put that on the bottom? Wait. How did that happen? What? I'm trying to get this through my head. I've seen this deck before, but how is that supposed to work? How did they get Bobo into play? Welp, I definitely want Gadok Teague. And, um... Um, that's it. Broken Bond doesn't deal with Possibility Storm because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's going to get tossed away by it. I could inc incidentally go into it, though. Okay, I don't need Obstinate Bailoff here. And I guess I'm going to, oh no, technical difficulties again. All right, I'm going to continue sideboarding here. Let's just kind of one Sakura. And run it like that. All right, I'm still local recording. I'm waiting for... Oh, please don't tell me I'm lagging out of Moto 2. Why does it always do this? We're going to play first. And that is going to be... Probably a mulligan. Doesn't have enough ramp. Okay, I'll keep this one. It's not great. Let's throw away Resto. Uh, it's reconnecting. Reconnecting. Hold on. Did my bot lag out too? No, my bot's good. So we actually, by the way, played against Kilgore Trout on the channel before. This isn't the first. It might be the second or third time. But I know we played against Kilgore Trout before. Okay, it's back. Let me tell the stream. Back. Refresh. Alright, let's go. Sakura. Hold up potential blocks, even though it probably won't matter. See, the thing about their deck is that it's very inconsistent because they don't have a guaranteed way to go find um, Possibility Storm and RG unless they're running, like, Commune with the Gods to maybe help find it. But, like, it's very inconsistent. All right, let's go grab a basic lamp. Bird and kitty combs. 
Go grab a basic forest and Juan Voli on the stomping ground. And we'll go get an overgrown tomb. So apparently I can still hard cast Gyruda here. According to the last game. We're going to try this. This is for science. This is the first game of the day. So we don't know what's going to happen. But I'm going to try to hard cast it. I don't know if me paying six mana for it is going to then put it in my hand. Because that'd be a little BS. But let's see what happens. Apparently it goes into play. All right. I guess I didn't update it on Moto yet. Um, but let's go and get a resto or a prime time. Let's let's grab um I'm gonna grab resto because there's also the potential of hitting Emrakul. Alright, no, no, no. Let's just go get prime time. Be safe. And let's go get Field of the Dead. Field of the Dead and Blast Zone for sure. Field of the Dead and Blast Zone to kill their elves. Where's Blast Zone at? Did I draw Blast Zone? I'm blind. I don't see it. What the heck? Where's Blast Zone? What? Hello? Do I already have it in play? Let's get double Field of the Dead. I don't have Blast Zone in play. Where is it? Oh, I milled it. <laughs> I milled it. Okay, I see what happened. But yeah, me getting out Gadok Teague is going to be just game ending. Yeah, they scoop it up. All right. Also, Enter the Infinite puts things back on top. Wait, so you get to like, oh, you put one card from your hand back on top of your library. So you put the Borborygmos back on top, and then you just cast the creature, and you go and grab it. Yeah, I see. All right, um, let's submit it right back. Yeah. I could bring in, like, a, a sweeper to just, like, kill their mana dorks so that they don't get it to possibility storm so quick. Now we're on the draw. Uh, yeah, I can ramp up to Mon Monvoli, disrupt their mana, and then proceed to Gyru to them. We'll see what happens. All right, elf number one. Ooh. Yeah, they don't got counter spells, so it's just the colorless land, or colored land. Okay, they didn't have another dork, so they're not going to get out Possibility Storm this turn. Hopefully I mana screw them. Alright, let's go Swamp, Farseek, and we'll just get a Ketria Triome. Or Indotha Triome, or whatever it's called. Abzan one, right? Yep. Alright, please don't have another land drop, or two more land drops, because I'm about to take one of those away. I'm going to take two of those away. I need them to be screwed. Just be screwed. Be squared. Juan Voli, there. Die. What are you doing? No. Temple Garden. I need it to... Gyruda into Ashen Rider, so I can exile another land. They're gonna stomp my dome. Okay. Goes fetching. So I have a feeling that I shouldn't Gyruda next turn and that I should just Monvoli. Okay, if they miss their land, I'm just gonna Gyruda. If they hit their land, oh, okay, it's Gyruda time. All right, planes, Gyruda. 
Please give me Ashen Rider. Please. I whiffed. Oh, I hit Gadog Teague. Oh, Gadog Teague's good, too. But Gadog Teague stopped my Monvuli. But it's okay, because I can resto my Gyruda. Ooh, Ghost Quarter. All right, let's go to combat and swing Gyruda. They take it. All right. Resto. I'm doing this main phase because I want to hit Ashen Rider and deny their mana. Yes. Uh, give me Borborygmos, please. Give me Borborygmos. And let me throw four lands at your face. Come on, don't scoop. I want to see this happen. No! Hello. All right, sweet. Just taking them down with their own Bobo. I had four lands to throw at them, too. That was so funny. Oh, man, it works so well. Although, like, the companion thing didn't get updated on Moto today, but I'm sure this deck wouldn't get too heavily affected by it, not only because of the fact that it has three main board Gyrudas, but because this deck has so much mana. Um, so I really hope this doesn't affect it, um, or this doesn't, like, affect, you know, like, the gameplay video, because it should still be the same. Or generally the same, I hope. Got a game here against Indicated P, and we won the die roll. We're going to be in the play with some Abzan Gyruda Bomb. And this hand... <clears throat> I don't know about this one. I don't have enough ramp. I don't think double resto is gonna. I mean, double resto can be good beat down win con. I'm gonna keep it. Uh, Ker Ker Kermafold the MTG. Thank you so much for the follow. Kermafold. Wait, Kermit Frog. Ker Wait, Kermit. Pick my fat B MTG. Thanks for the follow. Is that wait? What does it stand for? Kids might fight dragons. MTG the follow oh it's gemstone cavern v gemstone cavern Ooh. or does it stand for karate master karate master fights or karate master fushi, fushi dragon Oh, see, they're doing the same thing I am. Do they also have Garuda? Oh, they do. All right. Blast Zone. Let's play a Sylvan Carry added of my own. This is interesting. Uh, it looks like they're going to get up to Garuda first because they had um, Gemstone Caverns. So it's as if they were on the play. We have the same start. Please miss your land. Oh, they missed their land. All right, Sakura. Crack it, get a basic planes. Farseek. Get an overgrown tomb. Come on, no Monvoli. Yes! All right, here we go. <laughs> and a far seek of their own. Okay. But we had like the same exact start. Triple ramp. You know, like. Well, that is a lot of Gyrudas and Restos. All right, let's do this. I could take a Blast Zone to two and kind of try to mana screw them. But this is going to be quite the, the back and forth swing. Oh, I can get their Gyruda. I can also get a Prime Time. Interesting. I think I'm going to get prime time. And let's go get Field of the Dead and um and Ghost Quarter. Or no, let's go get Field of the Dead and Golgari Rot Farm. Yeah, cuz I want to get another land drop for next turn.
All right, that one is going to pick up. Um, the basic planes. Oh, I did not. Oh, because I had. Oh, I stacked it wrong. It only happens if I have seven. Okay, I screwed up. I thought it was going to work. Here comes the Gyruda of their own. They have so many good potential hits because we're running the same list. Linvala, the Preserver, Grave Titan. They got another Gyruda. They're going to Legend Rule. Try to hit something better. Ashen Rider. Oh, they're hitting Resto. Get another trigger. What are they going for? They hit my guy, Ruta. And Restoration Angel again. See, now they have a legit shot at milling me out because we both have ways to get more guy, Rudas. Another guy, Ruta. Obstinate Bayloth. Prime time. Okay, so their board's a little better. Okay, I, I think I'm going to attempt to mill them out. I have double resto. I can bounce Gyruda twice. Oh, yeah, this is going to happen. I'm going to mill them out here. This is going to be so crazy. This is going to be so insane. All right, let's do it. Uh, resto. Bounce Gyruda. Um, yes. Oh, let's get Resto. Bound Skyruta. And let's get Resto. Bounce Skyruta. Oh, so close. Come on. Yes. Let's get a Resto Bounce Guy Ruta. Come on, one more. Just one more. Um. All right, I guess we hit Ashen Rider. Exile there. Prime time. Okay. Resto number four. I have five Restos in my battlefield right now. Um, let's hit Gyruda, please. 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 I want the swag win. Hit just one Gyruda. Yes! Yes! The mill kill. The mill kill. You're dead. <laughs> That was epic. Man, I didn't expect to go against the mirror match here. It was crazy. Wow, dude. <laughs> so our lists are identical except for the fact that they have Linvala the Preserver, which is kind of awesome because if you're not doing anything until turn four, you might get, you know, like destroyed by burn. So getting Linvala the Preserver would be great. Okay, so what do I want against them? Probably a sweeper. Just in case they go off first. And Bajukabog. No, wait, not Bajukabog. Just the sweeper. Metamorph is great here. Um, I guess we're cutting Explore. No, our creatures are likely to get swept, aren't they? All right, let's cut a Sylvan Carry added. Running like that. All right, let's do this. Hey, Profeta. Hey, 12. Oh, you were there the whole time. Let me give you a hug. Okay, Gyruda is our companion. The Kraken battle. Ooh. That looks good. That looks really good. 
really good. Overrun Tomb is fine. Temple Graydon. Really Gouda, yeah. Um Okay, Swamp Do a Far Seek of our own. Get Ketria Trium. Or Dot the Trium or whatever. Um, Juan Vuli. Okay, they got him Juan Vuli. Hopefully they fizzle and I can just sweep them. Cavern on... Um... Bracken. Explore. Burden Kitty Combs. Fetch. Grab a basic forest. Bakuda. I'm gonna need another swamp, not only for or uh, for the sweeper. The guy root is here. Just whiff. Okay, nothing good. Resto. Oh no. Okay, they got their own resto. Uh, prime time. They hit my own resto. Why are they going? Why? Why do they not go prime time? But I'm new to this deck. This is my what fourth round with it and i still don't know the ins and outs of it so they could be doing the right play double ashen rider what are they hitting in my temple garden all right well here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go and get a swamp i'm gonna sweep the board They're going to exile another permanent. So I'm screwed. If they have any other good bomb in hand, I am definitely dead. Extra cheesy? I don't like cheese. It's weird. People find that weird about me, but I am not a fan of cheese. I, I can eat cheese, but I don't, I don't actually seek it out. And if I have the option of cheese or no cheese, I usually choose. Linvala the preserve the pres preserve. All right, taking five. A quick clock, but if I can hit my land drops and get up to this worm coil, get right back in it. There's a land drop. Um, but I can also play Obstinate and Bailoth here to gain a little bit. Come on, one more land. One more land. We can get back. So we each have two Ashen Riders in our deck, and we already milled two of them. Oh, they have a Resto as well. Uh, hey, Bibio. Can't see it, especially when people, if people are lactose intolerant. I'm not, I'm not lactose intolerant. I love milk, but, uh, I just don't like cheese. I just honestly don't like it. It's textured, it's chewy, it's, it's chewy and gooey, which can be good sometimes. Like, cheese on pizza is fine, but when you put too much cheese, like extra cheesy pizza, and it starts to get chewy, like eating glue. And the taste of it is fine, but like I don't like ricotta cheese and some cheeses that are just, I don't know. I could handle it, but it's, I don't, I'm not like, yes, I like this. Your wife couldn't eat cheese when she was pregnant with our second child. Found out you could use tofu with lemon juice and something else. Can't remember, kind of substitute. 
Um, seems about right. I love tofu. Tofu's great. As a vegetarian, tofu is like one of the saviors. Tofu, mushrooms, beans, the meat substitutes. Um, gonna run it right back. We just gotta be on the play. Yeah, we're on the play now, so we're just hoping that works. I feel like this matchup is whoever gets to their guy Ruta first wins. That's definitely what it is. Lemon, though, I'm not really a big fan. I don't like fruity stuff unless it's orange. I'm really not a fan of fruit anything unless it's orange. I just don't like fruit texture. Oh, man, if one of these was a green source. Dang. It would have been great if one of these was a green source. That's a mulligan. Fortunately, that'll be a keep. What do I throw away? I'm going to throw away one of my prime times because I already have plenty of things to do. All right, Field of the Dude. Hello. Garlock bread. Speaking of cheesy. Wait, garlic isn't cheese. Garlic is, is butter and garlic. Yeah, that's what garlic bread is. Thank you so much for the follow. Come on, I need another green source to learn to be able to hit that Sakura so I can get to my Garuda the next turn because they are like well on course with it because they got the dang gemstone caverns draw. This is looking bad. I got a really slow start out of Mulligan. Um, I'm just going to Sakura because I need to make sure I can double explore next turn. We'll get a basic forest. Play Field of the Dude. Pass. Happy you're playing Gyruda before the companion change? I'm not. I wanted the companion change because this is going to be uploaded next week when all of that stuff is for sure going to happen. And Ashen Rider is going to end. I'm not coming back from that. Well, it, what it took to beat us was us, basically. <laughs> the mirror. So... Uh, this was a fine game because you could still see what the deck can do because they are playing the same deck. So, uh, yeah, it can do some pretty insane things. Unfortunately, we had to mulligan in that last game and got a very slow hand. And they got the gemstone caverns in the optimal hand. So, that was cool. Got a game here against a little cheeky. And we won the die roll. We're going to be on the play with some Gyruda fatties. That is low, so we're going to mull. This is quicker, so we're going to keep and throw away Resto. Because Resto is only decent when you hit it off of Gyruda. Let's start on Field of the Dude. Here we go. It's going to be a good turn progression, hopefully. Street Wraith. So Monvoli should be real. Okay, never mind. What deck plays Street Wraith in Tolaria West? Is this like Living End? It might be Living End. Go get a basic forest. Play Sylvan Carry added. This is gotta be Living End. I don't see any. It's Mono Blue as foretold, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. So we're not gonna resolve Monvoli here because it's. A hundred thousand percent getting remanded. All right, let's name um crack in here. Try to hit their basic island, which is not good. It's either gonna get um remanded or mana leaked or um what is a dig the delve one? It's not gonna get delved out because they need their great.
If this resolves, we're in a really good... Oh! It resolved. All right, yeah, we're in a really good spot now. And I even have Cavern on Kraken, so next turn Gyruda is going to resolve, and they only got two mana. And if I hit, like, an Ashen Rider and can hit their blue source, this is going to be sick. All right. Uh, Gemstone, Cavern, Gyruda. Uh, black for Krakens. Maybe I should have put it on Giant to get that prime time. Come on, give me the give me the Kraken. No, are they Lotus Field? I kind of want another Cavern to make sure my prime time doesn't get countered. Oh, they can definitely like as foretold into oh that's another guy ruda they can definitely as foretold into like restore balance and sweep my boards that's what i'm scared of but i drew a second guy ruda so this is my this is gonna be my um blue for krakens let's go with the blue one this time don't have a second tail's end and Ashen Rider? Curator of Mysteries. Okay, we'll go with that. Uh, Windcaller Avon puts a flying counter on Gyruda. When you cycle it, put a flying counter. Yep. Hunt what I do. Could I have played prime time there? Astro told restore balance. Ancestral vision. Okay, so we should be good. Um, go to combat. Wait, why didn't I get the scry off curator? Doesn't it scry your upkeep? Oh, whenever you cycle or discard another card, you scry. Um, I mean, it makes sense to not play prime time because if they sweep the board, I'm going to want something to follow up with. So I think let's just explore here. Play a basic planes and pass the turn. Um, yeah, like. I don't want to run prime time out if I don't have to. So here comes restore balance. If, if they got it, it's definitely coming out here. Not playing cavern. I did. I do have cavern on Kraken or Gyruda. Why would you microwave tomatoes? Because sometimes you got to eat and you got to just use the microwave. Also because I don't have a kitchen. So, um... I can't cook properly because I don't have a stove or an oven. So all I have is a microwave. So I do all of my cooking with the microwave. Living end. Oh. Okay, well, prime time can definitely help me fight back here. Let's go and get, let's go get down prime time. We got six different land types. We're going to get two more differently named lands here. Probably Blast Zone for sure. And something else. Unfortunately, those street rates do have Island Walk. Wait, all of their stuff is unblockable except the Stripe Whip Finder. I might be able to live one hit though. Let's go and get... I probably need the life gain from uh, Radiant Fountain. So let's go and get Radiant Fountain. And a Blast Zone. There are two, so one zombie hit will kill them. I'm at 21. I'm making six zombies here, so I have the wider board. Okay, two more zombies. I got seven total attackers. They only have six blockers.
Please don't deal with any of my dudes. How much can they hit there for unblockably? They can go four plus this is 10, 18. They can only hit me for 18. Bring me to three. So let's see. When caller Aven cycles, they get to scry before they draw. They get to scry twice before they draw. Oh no, they're giving a flying counter to the river winder, and that's lethal. All right. I could have waited, maybe they wouldn't have attacked. Maybe they didn't do math correctly, but I'll trust it. What was I going to hit? I was going to hit Resto, one, two, three, four, into another prime time. All right, so I definitely want um, Chalice of the Void to name zero. And not Damping Sphere. I want Bajuka Bog. I want probably Abrupt Decay and Broken Bond. I don't need Obstinate Bayloth. Phyrexian Metamorph can go. Um, let's cut one Sakura. Um, cut one Forest. And one Mwanvuli. And the Worm Coil. And screw it, just run 61 cards, because why not? If Yorion decks can do it, I can do it too. Um, hey Marin, fun game. This mirror is kind of dumb. Wait, what? Got luck, got pretty lucky in G3 with the quick start. But microwaving tomatoes is not bad. Microwaving vegetables is not bad. They come out kind of like steamed. They get soft and they're kind of like steamed and mushy. It's pretty good. Um, however, tomatoes, if you microwave them, their skin does peel and it is kind of sometimes unpleasant. Uh, that's why you should skin your tomatoes before you microwave them. The same thing happens with bell peppers, by the way, not just tomatoes. Okay, I'll keep that. It's got chalice. I like I like the chalice. See if they can deal with that. They're mono blue, so they might not deal with that. But what they can do is when they're ready to go for the living end, they can cryptic command bounce this. Because that deck does run a play set of cryptic command. Shock, Farseek, we'll get Arundatha. Here we go. All right, so two turns for Gyruda. If it dies, you get the tokens. That's true, but it's not insane. They're cycling, or they're putting Ancestral Visions over there. Radiant Fountain. Back up to 20. Sylvan Curry added. And next turn is Gyruda time, but they're definitely going to have, like, Archmage's Charm if they don't, like, tap out for the yeah, As Foretold here. I assume they don't have As Foretold because they wouldn't have cycled that Ancestral. They would have saved it for this turn, but maybe they have multiple of them. Ooh. Basic plane. Gyruda time. Let's find out if they got the Archmage's charm. Tail's end. Cycles a wind collar Avon. Because we know they got they got um Tail's End too. Why do they have Tail's End? They're not a Lotus Field deck. Oh, they let it go. Okay, what are we getting? I whiff. Oh, I hit a Sylvan Carry added. Dang, that's underwhelming. But at least I have Resto for next turn to bounce this guy. But they're not getting their Ancestral just yet. Double tail. Why? 
Why is this here? I don't get it. Another guy, Ruda. Go to combat, swing six. I have eight mana, right? So I can Monvoli plus Resto. Let's do that. Monvoli here. Colorless, colorless. Green, green. And I'll just hold up Resto. Counter, okay. This is my chance to get Resto down. Flicker Gyruda. Come on, give me something amazing. Give me a prime time or an Ashen Rider. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. There's also another Resto. Is this what I go for? Why can't I reanimate their creatures? Oh, an even converted mana cost. Um, Resto or prime time? Uh, I'm going, oh man, I don't know. Okay, if, I, if it was the mirror match, I'd go Resto. But in 1v1, or in non-mirror, I'll go prime time. And I'll just get my, I'll get my field of the dead online. Go Field of the Dead, and Bajookabog, Bajookabog, yes. Heck yeah, Bajookabog, that was the correct play. I forgot I brought that in, so now I stand by that. Now I'll know for next game. Yeah, they scoop it up to Bajookabog. All right. <laughs> Maybe I want this sweeper too. Made it like that, like I don't care about cutting cards. No, Adam, see, it worked. Primetime, the best Dax piece. One of them. You can do a lot of things with Primetime, which is why it's the best Titan. It's the most versatile. I think the second most versatile is Sun Titan, but I think the second best is Grave Titan. Um, because Grave Titan's nuts. 10 power as soon as it enters for 6 mana, split between 3 bodies, and then produces 4 more power when it attacks. It's crazy. Ooh, I got another chalice. Keep it. Um, chalice on zero. Still then, I need another land drop. The Grave Titan is a win con in Legacy alone. Yeah, it's it's a win con wherever it's legal. Uh, it's not legal in Commander, unfortunately. It was too powerful for Commander. But I kind of wish it was legal in Commander so I can have some fun with it. Because I would do so much primetime shenanigans. As soon as it, it would become legal in, in Commander, those things would rise in price like crazy. Every Commander player would buy like two of them and they would go into every green deck and just Go and grab like Gaia's Cradle and Vesuva, or, or not, Vesuva can't copy Gaia. Um, it would go and get all kinds of stuff. Unfortunately, I can't Chalice on Zero when I already have a Chalice on Zero. Uh, forest. Farseek. Sure, you're gonna force a negation of Farseek. Dot the Triome, go. Valakut, yeah. Valakut shenanigans in Commander. Gaia's Cradle plus, like, what do you call that Glacier's card? Glacier Chasm. Oh no, we can't search our library because of Ashiok. But good thing I got an Abrupt Decay for that. I kind of want to Chalice of the Void on three, also, to stop As Foretold. It's their only way. So if they don't As Foretold here, I think I'm definitely going to attempt 
If I draw a land, I'll definitely attempt to chalice on three. Are they going to use Ashiok? Alright, what are they hitting? They hit double cavern. They just hit a bunch of mana. Alright, abrupt decay. Green. Black. Please land. Yes! Alright, let's name... Um, Bracken. Oh, but I have double prime time. Maybe I named Giant. Maybe I named Giant. Yeah, it's named Giant. And I think I definitely want to go for Chalice on three here because they could definitely have a Tails in. Yeah, I'm going Chalice on three. Because if this resolves, we win. I'd rather play the six mana win the game than the six mana do good things. Yes! All right, I don't see any way we lose now. I really don't. I really don't see any way we lose. I think the way we lose is the EOT cryptic bounce the one on three and then pass and then cryptic counter bounce the one on zero, but then I just replay it. All right, prime time. Uh, add green for giants. And now let's get Field of the Dead online. Yeah, boy. Give me them lands. Uh, Field of the Dead and... Um, I don't think I'm going to get Bajookabog just yet. Let's go and get Ghost Quarter. Oh wait, they have Blast Zone. They can take that up to two and blow up our Chalices, right? Are our Chalices CMC zero? I think they are. So they can't even hit them with Blast Zone. They'd have to hit them with like Explosives, but they can't cast Explosives on zero because I have the Chalice on zero. So uh, yeah, I think we're good. If they run red, lands matter. Run Valica, but Vazuka copies it. Yeah, but I was talking about Cradle. Can't copy Cradle. But yeah, you like if Primetime was legal in Commander, you just go get Dark Depths, Despians. Suva. Go to combat. Attack, attack, attack. Tails and the trigger, sure. All right, well, tighten it up again. Oops, leave up the ghost quarter. You got another tail's end? Alright, they don't. Let's go and get... I think now I'll get Bajookabog. Right? Yeah, Bajookabog and our own blast zone. I at least exile three creatures. And I'm going to ghost quarter their blast zone. And we have super ultra mega lethal in so many different ways here. All right. Well, opponent, you have three cards in hand. And you're at eight. Do something. It is your chance to do something. And that is a concession. Wow. I'm absolutely destroying them with chalice. The cyborg chalices are so good here. Because this deck is like run CMC of, uh, even CMC. So I like how when Chalice comes in, you can literally just put it on any odd costed CMC, like one or even zero, because we have no zero drops. If we ramped enough, put on two. Like, it's since we ramped so much, put it on, like, it just it feels so good. Maybe it wants playset in the board. That was crazy. 
Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. So today we're speeding up the next two games. And this first game right here was very, very long. It must have been like 55 minutes. Like it was a very long game. As you can see, I completely bopped them. This is what, turn four? And look at my board. Like I got, I, I ramped out the, the Gyruda and then it just started chain reactioning off and eventually hitting a prime time to get double field of the dead and trigger it. And then the next turn when I swing and I just ended up with a trillion zombies. So that was an insane nut draw. Uh, but going on to game number two, we figure out what they're on. They're on the Bant Soul Herder deck. So Bant Soul Herder deck, you can imagine why this was the longest game in the video because Soul Herder is a deck that really takes long and grinds out super hardcore with all the value. And now everything I try to go for, they keep denying because like I try to kill their creature, they ephemerate, and then they start blinking the Cloud Blazer and gaining a bunch of life and drawing a bunch of cards. And even though they're gaining life and drawing cards, I'm not super worried because they're just drawing into more little things like Coiling Oracle and lands and ephemerates and they're just going to keep drawing into little stuff like that. They don't have anything like crazy huge that I have to worry about, but even though they're drawing a bunch of cards, except like removal spells like Path to Exile and things like that, Deputy of Attentions, and they even got that Agent of Treachery. Now, the Agent of Treachery is a big problem. That is something that we have to worry about. But that Asian of Treachery is also something that I can look forward to when I um, use Gyruda because Gyruda can reanimate your opponent's creatures as well. So I can reanimate their Asian of Treacheries. Uh, now they have this dang annoying Deputy of Detention holding my other Gyruda. I just got to find a way to remove it. And at this point, it's a little bit too far gone. Like they got Yorion out now and they can start flickering Yorion with Solar Herder and bouncing everything every turn. And it's just going to be crazy. Like, even though I get out prime time, they just remove it and then it's just over. So going on to game number three, this game was the longest one. The amount of time it took from the speed up session starting to right now, double that. And that is what this next round took. So they have uh, rest in peace. Now, rest in peace is very annoying for us. Um, but then I come to find out that Gyruda does not care about rest in peace. I, I go prime time first because I feel like Gyruda is not going to work. Uh, but then when they deal with it, but I get my zombies because I get my precious Guild of the Deads. But when I play Gyruda, I find out here that it does not care about Rest in Peace. Four cards that Gyruda takes off the top into the grave, you can still choose a creature from among them. And it'll put the creature from either the graveyard or exile, doesn't matter where, it'll still put it into place. So I'm able to get a second copy of um, Primetime and get some more tech in there. And with this tech, I don't care about dealing with Rest in Peace anymore. Like I can use my Blast Zone and other things. And so when they play a second um, deputy detention, I think they totally forgot about my blast zone. So all I do is just take my blast zone up to three right here, and I'm able to crack it and remove both of their deputies, and I get back my Garuda and my prime time. And that is just a value explosion right there. And now at this point, we just hope our opponent doesn't have like a uh, supreme verdict or something, which I doubt that the soul herder deck does. Now, they're very, very much holding off all of our zombies that we keep making with Field of the Dead because they keep bouncing dang deputy detentions every turn. Like, Blast Zone dealt with one, but the other one got ephemerated or whatever, or something happened to it where they're able to save it. Um, but they keep dealing with the zombie tokens I make, and they just produce a bunch of blockers, and their soul herder's getting thick, so they're actually doing a pretty good job at stabilizing. They're at one life here, though. So we're getting very close. And uh, that ended up being the game, and so... Grind it out against Soul Herder. That was quite the grind, but we ended up on top and got more value. So now we're on to the last game, and this one was significantly shorter. It's going to end in like 20 seconds, but you will see why. Uh, I sped it up instead of leaving it in unsped up because there is a Magus of the Moon on your screen. And you know what happens when the opponent has a Magus of the Moon? We do nothing. And so we can't do anything if we don't have colors. Going on to the next game, they have a Blood Moon, and we really can't do anything about Blood Moon. I do get the uh, Sylvan Carry added, so I managed to cast the Garuda, but it ends up whiffing. And that was my last hope. I do have a Breath Decay to kill the Blood Moon, um, but they end up using Lucka to turn their dude into an Emrakul. And, you know, I can't deal with that. I There's no thing I can possibly do at that point to recover from the Emrakul, sweeping all my land. So that's going to be a GG. Let's go on to the wrap-up. Hope you enjoyed. So we ended up with four total wins. Uh, the deck has like, it's it's pretty scary when it's mid-range versus mid-range or if you go up against a deck that has sweepers. And that's what the original Gyruda deck struggled with was sweepers. 
Um, but this deck has a little bit more resilience in the way that um, it can get a Worm Coil, which doesn't care about a Sweeper. Prime Time can go and get Field of the Dead, which you don't care about Sweepers because you'll rebuild, re rebuild really quick. Ashen Rider can exile two things when it like enters and then dies to a Sweeper. So this deck is a lot more resilient to Sweepers than the OG clone Gyruda decks were. And this deck, despite it not having actual like um, millions of clones, it still had the potential to mill the opponent out by just getting more Gyrudas and Restos and the one Phyrexian Metamorph. Although, um, if possible, I think if I try to build this deck, I would try to Splash Blue to run Spark Double still, because I think it's Spark Double still really strong with Gyruda. However, you know, it just does make sense running a Restoration Angel instead. Because when you run Resto instead, you can flicker your other things like Primetime and Ashen Rider. So it, I guess it does make sense to run Resto. Um, so I really have no complaints with this deck. 28 lands worked out perfectly fine. Um, I wish it had like one more um, like land disruption land. Like it only had a Singleton Ghost Quarter. I wish it had like one Encroaching Wastes or like one Tectonic Edge or like another Ghost Quarter or like a Field of, the Ru or Field of Ruin. That is one thing that I would add in here, just like a singleton. Um, because there was a lot of times where we were on the land disruption plan. Like we were going for like Juan Vuli and to get Ashen Rider. And like we want to keep on destroying land. So what can we do? Like if we hit prime time, let's go and get Tectonic Edge or something. You know, like that that is something that I wish that that was in here. Uh just another way to blow up lands with prime time. Just make everything into potential land disruption. And uh, I guess that's all I have to say about that. It, like, we really didn't... We got a good, a decent amount of matches, but there's still some games that, that we don't know how they would go if we did play against them. Like, I feel like Tron would be a little bit scary, but then again, if you're not playing Burn or Blitz, Tron is scary against anything. Um, sideboard worked out fine. I would want to add a second sweeper and maybe Assassin's Trophy over one Abrupt Decay. I like Bajookabog. And in modern right now, I've even seen people running main board graveyard hate, so I would definitely put the Bajuka Bog in the main deck. You know, because it's like, it's another swamp. What's the downside? Just go and fetch it when you need it with prime time. I would definitely main board that and just free up another slot. Feels kind of awkward with that being in the board. Chalice of the Void was heck a clutch. We never really brought in engineered explosives, although there's probably some times where I should have brought it in but didn't. Um, Gadog Teague's pretty cool. It does stop our own Monvuli Acid Mosses, but we don't care too much about them. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. I would give it a goodness rating, probably like a 6 out of 10. Although, um, one thing that I, that I wish I would have done, or funness rating, I'll give it like a 9 out of 10. It was pretty insane. Um, but one thing that I wish got updated on Moto was the dang companion mechanic thing, where you have to pay 3 sorcery speed to put your companion into your hand from your companion zone and so we didn't really get to try that out and so if you pick up this deck today i guarantee you that's how it's going to be however there was a lot a lot a lot of times where we chose to play get rid of from our companion slot when we already had one in hand and also this deck has so much redundant mana and so much ramp and 28 lands that i feel like paying three mana to put it into your hand is not that big of a downside yes sometimes it would delay you a turn but each turn with this deck when you slam Gyruda is really explosive. So I feel like you can rebuild like quick enough. And I think that one turn's not gonna make a huge difference depending on the deck you're going up against. So and if you did if that was a big like hampering, what do you call it? Hampering? Like a hindrance? Hindrance. If that was a big hindrance, then you could just build your deck with a little bit more of a disruption package. Maybe do add the second sweeper and maybe like Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy main deck or something like that. Be more disruptive on the turn that you're actually going to go for putting the, the companion into your hand. So that is something that I would like to say. If you were going to, you know, try it out with that sorcery speed thing with the new rule, maybe build your deck a little bit more disruptive. So I guess that's a bit. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. Let me know a deck you want to see in the comments down below, which are the social media links down below. If you want to try today's deck out, consider signing up with Mana Traders and the link down below using the code Marin Moon. Save 15% off and you can rent today's deck on Magic Online. That is how I play my MTGO gameplay is Mana Traders. 
If you'd like to pick up today's deck and paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our tcplayer.com affiliate link. And anything you purchase at that link really helps out the channel. Special thanks to all the sponsors, patrons, and Twitch chat. I am going to get on out of here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.